Previously served as Vice President of Marketing of the Victoria EDC for more than 15 years, where he was in charge of retaining and expanding Victoria's existing local industry, as well as attracting new industry in the region through marketing efforts. He is a member of the Texas Economic Development Council and International Economic Development Council. Currently serves as chairman of Team Texas, a statewide economic development marketing association. It represents almost 100 Texas cities, and he's also a director on the board of the Texas Economic Development Council. Uh, Adrian was recently named one of the top 50 economic developers in North America by Consultant Connect. So please welcome Adrian with his story about Temple, Texas. And to advance, just press the big middle button. Sounds good. Thank there you. you go. Well, thank you for your time this afternoon, and I'm going to take out my iPhone timer because as any good economic developer will do, we will continue to sell our community uh, shamelessly in any venue at any time possible. Uh, but I will tell you, you know, I mentioned to Peter, I've got uh, quite a few slides that I want to share with you all today. Uh, and I said, Peter, don't worry, I recognize that I'm the one that's between the audience and sitting in traffic uh, in Dallas as they try to get home. He said, no, you've got it wrong. You're the one between the audience and two crisp $100 bills. So uh, now the pressure's really on to move through this uh, presentation. Uh, I, I appreciate uh, the prior speaker's uh, discussion around focused and intentional efforts. Uh, and I really believe in economic development uh, that's what makes communities successful. Uh, I've been saying this for a long, long time. I've uh, spent about 17 years in economic development, and the bottom line is prepared communities win. Uh, and when we talk about preparation of communities, we usually are thinking about, cities are thinking about, governments are thinking about water and sewer and roadways. Uh, sometimes you think about quality of life, parks, and things of that nature. And all those are very, very important or critical uh, and base needs uh, for any successful community. But as we think about economic development and as we think about game changers, as we think about communities that set themselves apart for creating primary jobs in the community, driving big investments uh, in the community, uh, rail is an integral part, a critical part to that discussion. And uh, I'm pleased to share with you today uh, the discussion of Temple's success as it relates uh, to rail. Uh, the Temple EDC, uh, EDCs are formed very differently all across the state, uh, but in Temple we are a 501c6 nonprofit private corporation. Uh, we are a contractor for marketing services uh, to the city of Temple uh, as well as to the Temple Health and Bioscience District, which is another taxing organization. And our mission quite frankly, uh, and there's some fancy words that uh, gets put up from our strategic plan, but really our mission is about creating new jobs, new primary jobs uh, in the community and new investment, capital investment uh, in our community. And so we really think around how we get that done and then selling the assets uh, that we have. Now there's been a trend in economic development uh, and I have to say we've also picked up some other aspects to our marketing services. Uh, because of the low unemployment in, in the state of Texas, it's well documented. Uh, we go around to companies and they say, hey, we can't find workers. You know, how do we attract workers here? Uh, so here recently, in the last year, we've really undergone a strategic plan. We're out of that strategic plan, and we've got a, a, a master plan going forward to, to spend some time on talent attraction efforts. So talking about what a great place this is to live and the jobs that are available here in the community. Uh, and there's also the aspect of, of business retention that's absolutely important. Uh, but I think where some communities have missed the boat uh, is when they have forgotten where their roots are uh, in industry. Uh, industry for many communities in these, the United States, it is what built our country. Uh, it is what is the economic dr driver in our country. Rail has been the economic driver uh, since the inception of our country. Uh, that's really when the Industrial Revolution took off, uh, and that's really for the story of Temple where we took off. I will uh, take a moment to note, uh, you'll see some buildings there that look fairly new. Our offices are there, and the, 
uh, chambers offices are there, the workforce groups there, and the TIPL ISD is there. But if you look in the, in the uh, far right-hand corner, uh, that is our original Santa Fe Depot. Uh, that is, uh, for those of you who rode the Eagle Line, that's where it comes off and stops in Temple. Uh, that's where the, the tr uh, track for the BNSF runs through our community. And so when we had an opportunity to undergo a $30 million project in downtown Temple and develop a business center where we can create synergy, uh, where we can create relationships, develop relationships, and develop the next generation of job creators in our community. We chose this location right next to our Santa Fe Depot uh, because rail is very much part of our DNA and our bloodline. So as you look at Temple, uh, because of the rail uh, presence uh, and really because of our location, uh, we, we have key industries around uh, manufacturing, distribution is really big in our community, and healthcare, and uh, Many of you, all of you are probably familiar with Baylor, Scott & White, the largest, uh, their largest hospitals in uh, Temple, Texas. Uh, but when we look at that story and we look at the companies that have located there, you know, we always look back to what our successes have been and how can we replicate those sex successes uh, over the, the next generations. Uh, and so, again, as you look at Temple and its location in the state of Texas, right there in the Golden Triangle, we're two and a half hours from 18 million in population. That's well over half of Texas's uh, population. Uh, you can see why then logistics, distribution, rail really is an important story uh, to our success as a community. And then as we look and drill down further in into the city of Temple limits, uh, the, the EDC, we uh, represent and own and manage about 1,200 acres of property uh, in five industrial parks. Uh, we also represent about another 16 to 1,800 acres that are available for industrial and office development uh, that the city owns. Uh, and that's really our portfolio of properties that uh, we control, the government controls that we're charged to, to market. Uh, but if you could make out the orange lines, that run through the center of town. So if you've ever been down 35, which I'm sure all of us have, uh, if you look at that big overpass, if you look to the left, you'll see the huge Santa Fe, Burlington Northern Santa Fe switchyard, rail yard. Uh, that really is a big part of the story of our success. And as you think about the main lines that, that go through uh, uh, Temple, one of the lessons I learned as a young economic developer when I was uh, in Victoria, Texas, is just because you have rail going by your properties doesn't mean you have rail service. Uh, and so some of you are nodding your heads and some of you have probably talked to clients and customers that said, hey, I located here because I thought I could get rail. And you said, you didn't talk to me. I don't know who, what economic developer lied to you about that. Uh, so we got to start from square one on that. But we recognize that in Temple, Texas. So what we did was we set upon a journey of really taking a look at what are truly rail served opportunities in our community? Because those are the sites that we're going to, we're going to acquire land, uh, we want to, to bring into our portfolio of properties, uh, and then begin to start to master plan and think about how we get rail spurs off of the main line uh, and work with our partners at the uh, BNSF to do that. Uh, so if you look at this map, and it may be a little hard to make out, uh, but if you see the, the shaded area to the north, uh, of this map. Uh, that is some of our primary industrial property that we identified. Uh, and if you look at the red uh, that's highlight, highlighted in that area, that's when we started to really plan around, you know, how can we pull off of the main line, the main line being the purple, you see the switch yard at the bottom of the slide, and the main line coming up. And we said, where can we pull the red off of that purple? Where can we really start to touch these available industrial properties? And we started to do some planning around that many years ago. This, started in a, this effort started in about 2005. We started having this discussion. And what we recognized was, again, the fact that we did not have truly rail serve sites. We had sites that had rail going by it. And so we really began to think about how might this develop on the properties that we own. Here you'll see a slide from 2006. Uh, we started to really break this out and said, okay, we have about in and around a total of five to 600 acres 
here uh, in the northern part, the northernmost part of our industrial park. Well, what does that look like? What kind of industries could we potentially bring to that area if we develop rail uh, the right way? And so here you'll see one of the early uh, drawings from our engineer. Uh, here the thought was around if we break up that four, five, six hundred acres that we had available, uh, maybe we can locate a lot of smaller type of projects. Anywhere from that 10 to 25 acre range, have a few breakouts for 40 acre properties, uh, and, and then we'll be ready to go. As you all know, in this room, rail is very expensive. Uh, so this was something that we really engineered out. We planned it, and it was kind of ready. We did not want to spend the money uh, because in economic development, as luck would have it, as soon as you build it all out, somebody says, I need to be right there, or the proportions of my facility won't work where you have this 40 acres. It needs to be a little longer, a little wider. Uh, and so we just had it engineered and planned. So we had a, a, an opportunity as we were thinking about all this in 2005, going into 2006. In 2006, we had an opportunity for an ethanol plant. And I remember being in Victoria at the time. Uh, there were ethanol plants all over the Gulf Coast, all over the state of Texas that were talking about that as the new wave. Uh, and Temple had an opportunity there for the proposed ethanol site. So this was another drawing. We kind of scrapped that plan, uh, the, the uh, earlier engineered plan, and engineered a design here that had a, lo a loop in there and then broken out larger tracks. So instead of going to that 10 to 20 acres, let's look at 40 plus acre sites. Let's look at a 100 acre site in there. Uh, and again, so that we're prepared. So we engineered uh, some drawings here and had a plan ready to go and ready to pull the trigger if the project pulled the trigger. A point to note here, I talked about prepared communities win. Because we were responsive, because we had our partnerships uh, in place at the city level, at our reinvestment zone who funds uh, just about all of our industrial rail park development, uh, we were able to, to contract with our engineer to, to get this done, but we were also able to remain agile. Agility in economic development is, is critical. Uh, and so for, from that standpoint, uh, again, we did not commit to putting the rail in. We did respond very quickly. As it were, uh, the ethanol facility and opportunity went away, but right after that, we, we had an opportunity to uh, really change the game from Temple for Temple as a logistics center. Uh, around about that time, uh, it was sometime after the Toyota announcement in San Antonio, Texas, uh, and Gulf States Toyota came to us and said that they were looking at the potential uh, to locate a facility uh, in Temple, Texas, uh, that they could bring cars in, uh, do some uh, final prepping of, of those cars and then send them out. And so that's when we went, went away from this idea of, hey, let's break this, this thing up. We had a customer who was willing to take 300 acres in the northern part of that industrial park. And so then we, we laid out this design uh, where you see the pink or salmon colored lines come into that 314 acres, uh, then provide uh, some spurs off of that. We have some lead lines come there, and then some spurs that come off of that that uh, service uh, some of the smaller tracks that we have in our northern part of the industrial park. And so this is what we ended up with. Uh, the GST uh, folks ended up purchasing the property. Uh, we agreed to put in about $16 million uh, worth of track uh, to service that site. Uh, a huge ask uh, for the community, but again, our preparation, our partnerships in place, the money set aside to win the project, we were successful at winning the project, and we sold the property to Gulf States Toyota. The economy changed uh, after 2007, uh, and so the project was pulled, but we had already committed to laying the track, and we were already in the process of building the track. Uh, for many communities, that would be devastating, absolutely devastating. Uh, but we used it as an opportunity. So we went in and we put that $16 million uh, of track in. We came off of the main line. Uh, we really boned up our industrial area. And you can see there's a lot of green space out there. 
Uh, and as good economic developers do and good communities do, we marketed the heck out of that site as a real serve site. We worked with our uh, partners at BNSF. And today, we have some announcements uh, to bring forth and to, to enjoy uh, the rail infrastructure that we put in. Just this last year, uh, East Penn Manufacturing, who manufactures batteries for vehicles, batteries for mining equipment, batteries for recreational vehicles, announced a $106 million investment uh, that would create 266 new jobs uh, on 40 acres in that industrial park. Niagara Bottling, in the last year, announced $90 million of investment, creating 70 new jobs and building out 450,000 square feet. Now, I've been in touch with Niagara here recently, and they tell us their numbers are more like $110 million and 550,000 square feet that's in that facility right there. Uh, because we had the industrial park ready, because the infrastructure was ready, uh, Niagara was able uh, to, uh, we were able to deed the property, 40 plus acres to Niagara last April. Uh, and they shipped their first pallet of water in December uh, of 2019. Uh, so quite uh, amazing that they were able to put such a facility uh, in play uh, very quickly uh, because of the preparedness of our community. Uh, additionally, after the new year, we started off uh, the, the year with a bang. Uh, Niagara came back to us uh, and was so happy with what they found in the community. Uh, they had done another site search and they let us know for an additional investment, and they let us know that they were gonna be adding another 170,000 square foot to that facility. They would be putting in another $90 million uh, in investment. So $200 million uh, from Niagara, and it will equate to about 125, 130 jobs. Now Niagara does not have the rail access at the back of their facility, but they did note that that flexibility, the ability to transload for future use of rail was absolutely part of the equation. So if you look at that 314 plus acres today, uh, that's what it looks like. The uh, box, the white box up top is the Niagara facility on 40 acres thereabouts. Uh, and the gray box uh, uh, down below is the East Penn manufacturing facility. Again, uh, examples of what can happen when your infrastructure comes into play. You'll see there the uh, the blue lines uh, that are our lead lines that, that we brought in to the back of that property. The red line uh, shows about 3,000 linear feet that we've agreed to put in for East Penn uh, for their use, uh, and that will be about $2.5 million investment. So we're nearing about $20 million as a community investment uh, into building out uh, this particular part, just this particular part of our industrial park uh, with rail. So what that also does is it leaves way for opportunity uh, for the balance of that property. Uh, here's an example of another 120 acres that could be used. Again, the idea is we don't want to start building out in, in the rail into greenfield area that could be used for manufacturing space. We will want our customers to come into the industrial park, bring us the project, and allow us to stay agile uh, with how we could, uh, and flexible with how we could serve uh, the potential project. So all in all, I mentioned East Penn and Niagara just in the last year, but in the last five years, $600 million of new investment. This slide does not take into account the additional $90 million that uh, Niagara just committed to us three weeks ago uh, in our visits with them. Uh, so that will be $700 million of new investment uh, in our rail park. You can see the names mentioned there in the last five years, HEB distribution. Uh, and again, what, what ends up happening when you have the rail, when we were in our discussions with HEB, and they have a $250 million investment there in their distribution center. You know, what we noted to them is we didn't want to be a location just for the DC. We wanted the value add manufacturing. And food and beverage being a growth industry in the state of Texas, I don't think many of us are eating less, right? I've got three boys, uh, and as we continue to grow, they are growing and eating more. Uh, and so uh, we anticipate that there will be opportunities in the very near future to bring food manufacturers on campus next to this distribution center. 
Uh, this is something that HEB typically has not done in some of their other DCs, uh, but it's something they're very interested in exploring here simply because, again, we have the rail infrastructure uh, in place. So here's some shots of what that looks like. You can see we've left ourselves plenty of space uh, to continue to bring uh, additional track uh, parallel. Uh, right now, we are doing some level of transloading uh, at the site. There in the background, you'll see the HEB distribution center. Uh, to the right of the tracks uh, is where the East Penn manufacturing facility will go. They'll start construction uh, June 1 of this year on that facility. And again, just some, some visuals there of that track that's been put in. So you talk about economics, economic engines, primary jobs, what does that mean to your community? In the last 10 years, 8,000 new jobs in the city of Temple. The tax base, which uh, our friends at the city and county uh, love to talk about because, you know, one thing we say in economic development, as needs grow, as more services are required or asked for from the citizens, there's two ways you could pay for that. You can raise the tax rate, which nobody, I think, wants to do, uh, or you can increase the number of taxpayers paying into the pot of money, right? Uh, and when you look particularly at a company like Niag Niagara, who will put $200 million of investment and pay out taxes on real property, on personal property, on inventory tax, but they only employ 70 to 100, 120 people is what they're thinking about uh, at, at full scale ramp up there. Uh, their load on the community as far as services needed is low compared to what they're paying in. So they're really socializing the costs of services for all the citizens uh, in the city of Temple. And so you see those numbers. Since 2011, six in our, in our real industrial park, 61% increase in taxable valuation. Uh, we look at the reinvestment zone alone, and the reinvestment zone uh, is incorporated in all of our industrial parks, 272% increase in the same time frame. Uh, and because of all those new jobs and because of all that new construction, uh, we've continued to see sales tax growth uh, consistently over the past 10 years as well. I didn't have numbers on here uh, with respect to uh, home uh, construction, uh, but as we think about Temple growing, uh, we for the last four years in a row have set records for new home construction starts. Year over year this year was 20%. Uh, the prior year was 17%. The year prior to that was 13%. All of those are records uh, that continue to get higher and higher. We had 900 uh, new home starts last year. Again, for a community of 82,000 people in population, that's quite significant. It actually outpaces Waco. So Chip and Joanna need to catch up to what Temple's doing. I still don't understand how people wait an hour and a half for a cupcake at the silos. I just don't get it. Well, my wife does, though. Uh, so that's the story of Temple. Uh, rail has been absolutely significant to us, and we look forward uh, to continued growth and opportunities to bring more rail into uh, our available properties. So that's, that's a great question. So they tested the quality of water with the city, and they like the city water. Although for some of our heavier industries, so we've brought in our first chemical plant uh, that's putting in about a $30 million investment uh, into the community. And so we are looking at well water as an option uh, so that folks don't have to use potable water for wash down and, and for cooling. Thank you. Oh. What size your staff? Staff of four. So we're a small but mighty. My, uh, my dad used to say, who's smaller than me even, uh, if you can imagine, uh, he, he says, I'm a small piece of leather, but I'm well put together. So, so that's what I tell my board, right? Uh, we are looking at opportunities for growth. We've taking on, we're taking on more uh, in what we do than we ever have before. It's a great time in Temple, Texas, and I anticipate uh, we'll see some growth in staff as we go forward. Thank you for your time. Thank you.